Welcome back, guys. My name is Balaji, and if you are new here, this is Regu School of Fashion. In today's episode of our blazer jacket sewing tutorial, I will continue from where I stopped in the last episode. If you are here to watch the previous episodes, kindly check the description area below for the link to the playlist. Remember to subscribe to my channel for regular notifications and also give this video a thumbs up. Guys, watching ads on my videos is one of the major factors that can keep me encouraged in releasing more valuable content on this platform. Please, don't skip those hats because that is the only way I get rewarded here on YouTube. With that being said, let's get started. After cutting out all the pieces I will be using in constructing a short collar blazer jacket, the next step is to construct the dart. In constructing the dart, I will transfer the dart I plotted on my pattern onto my fabric. So here is a dart I've plotted on my fabric as you can see. This is a waist level. Here is a waist level and this line is a pocket opening. The distance between the waist level and the pocket opening is 2 inches at this edge. This is the side of my fabric and this is a front. From this point, which is a waist level, to the pocket opening point is 2 inches. But from this point, which is a dark point on the waist level, to this point is 1 inch and 3 quarter. So which means this is quarter of an inch shorter than this because the pocket is not meant to be on a perfect straight line it has to come down in a slant manner so as you can see this line is not on a straight line if i want it to be on a straight line i will measure two inches downward from the waist level on the dart point it, it's going to fall somewhere around here but from the waist level by the side of my fabric to this point is two inches okay so the next step is to cut out the dart Okay, so before I cut out the dart, the length of my dart is 7 inches. I'm just doing this as a recap so that you can connect with me easily. Okay, so my dart's length is 7 inches, so which is meant to stop here. Okay, so I'm, I'm supposed to construct the dart from this point. But because when I'm cutting out the dart, I don't want it to get exactly to this point. So I measured 1 inch downward. And I constructed the darts from this point. But when I'm ready to pick the darts, I will start picking the darts from the 7 inches point. Now I will be aligning the two pieces of the front panel together. So, and it's going to be the right side facing. So, so it's going to be the right side facing the right side. Now I have the two front panels pinned together and I'll be cutting out the dart. Don't forget this is my dart point and I came down by one inch. After cutting I will stop at the one inch point. Then I will stop on the one hinge point. Okay guys, now I have my dart cut out on both pieces of the front panel, as you can see. So this is what I have for this now. Then I will be picking my dart by joining this together. So when I'm ready to pick the dart, I will start picking from this point. So this is just to prevent the dart point from being ripped off. Okay. So before picking the dart, I will have to cut out my dart on the lining as well. 
and I will be using the front panel as a template. So here is a side for the lining. So this is a lining and the dart falls on the lining. So before cutting out my dart on the lining, I will be joining the lining together with the facing. So I have two pieces cut out for my facing and two pieces for the lining. Okay, so this is what I will be having. Then I will stitch with half of an inch seam allowance I had it. All true. So this side that is like brown color is the wrong side of my lining. And this silver side is the right side of my lining. And I'll be positioning the lining and the facing, right side facing the right side. So after joining the two pieces together, then I will use this as template to cut out the darts. I'll be doing this off the camera and I'll be back to show you the next step. So guys, now I've joined the facing and the lining together as you can see. And this is what I have after joining. So after joining the two pieces together, then I open up the seam allowance and I gave it a press. So that is why you are seeing it looking flat like so. So the next step is to cut out the dart I have on the lining, which I will be using the front panel as a template. So guys, now I have the dart cut out on both panels. The next step is to pick the dart. So in picking the dart, I will be holding each panel like so. And I will fold it right side facing the right side. So this is my dart point. So my dart length is from this point to this point. Okay, then I will stitch with half of an inch seam allowance which I added. So this measurement was added on the waist level. So on the waist level, I will measure half of an inch. So here as well, I will measure half of an inch. Then I will connect the half of an inch point to the dart point I have here. Then I will take this straight down from the waist level to the pocket point. So you can see what I have. So this is how I will be picking my darts. So I will stitch from the pocket level point to the dart point. Now that I'm done picking the darts, the next step is to attach the side piece. Here is the side piece, that is the third piece we have in the three-piece blazer jacket. Okay, so this is going together with this, right side facing the right side. So the part I will be attaching is not the vent area side, not this side, but the other side. Okay, make sure you pick the piece that match up with the side. So I will hold this like this. You can see this is now in pieces. So I will attach this like so with half of an inch seam allowance I had it. right side facing the right side and i'll make sure this align properly so you can see what i have on the wrong side then i will pick up the second piece and match it up with this edge you 
can see what I have make sure it doesn't overlap it must not overlap but make sure the two edges meet properly like so and I will continue stitching so you can see what I have so after stitching I will have something like this you can see what I have here so this is the opening for the pocket welds so now I will take this to my sewing machine and I will attach all the pieces together I've done this and I'll be attaching the remaining three pieces that is the remaining one piece for the front panel and two pieces for the lining and I'll be back to show you the next step so guys now I've joined the side piece together with the front panel and this is what I have after joining and I also joined the lining as well you can see what I have so after joining then I opened up the seam allowances and I gave it a very good press so you have to do this in order to make your seam allowance lay flat okay then you will have the right side seam showing up properly and neatly okay so after this has been done the next step is to construct the waist pocket as I said in the previous episode we will be having a waist pocket and we will be having the chest pocket but I will start with the waist pocket now I will be constructing the waist pocket firstly I will construct the welt after constructing the welt then I will be back to show you how to attach the pocket bag and how to attach the flap okay so I will be constructing the pocket welt it's going to be a double welt pocket I will be doing this off the camera and in case you don't know how to do this, I have a well detailed tutorial on how to make a double world pocket and a single world pocket. The video has been linked up in the description area below. So make sure you check it out. I'll be doing this off the camera. You can see I have four worlds, two for each side of the front panel. And I will be back to show you the next step. So guys, now I'm done constructing the world as you can see. This is a double route and this is what I have after the construction. Then on the wrong side, this is how it looks like. You can see I don't have the pocket bag attached yet. Okay. Just as I said earlier, if you don't know how to make a pocket route, I have a well detailed tutorial on how to make double and single route pockets. The videos has been linked up in the description area below. So after constructing the route, the next step is to attach the flap. In attaching the flap, I have my two pieces cut out and I will position the two right side facing the right side. Like so. Then I will stitch with half of an inch seam allowance all around the two pieces. So I will stitch with half of an inch seam allowance on the upper parts like so by the side downward from edge to edge then by this side as well from edge to edge but i will be leaving the lower parts like so i will not stitch the lower part because this is what i will be using in turning it inside out so after stitching this this and this then i will turn it inside out and give it a very good press okay which i have a sample here which i've done you can see what i have after stitching I trimmed down the seam allowance, I turned it inside out and I gave it a very good press. So this is what I have after giving it a press. So now after this, I can go ahead and attach the flap together with the welt. All I will be doing is, I will insert this, that is the opening part of the flap. You can see what I have. I will hold the two together like so. Then I will insert it in between the welt, in between the two welts making sure it gets to the edges of the world then i will open up the upper part of my jacket then bring this out on the wrong side i will pull out the flap on the wrong side like so okay so it's not depends on how long you want your flap to be 
it can be 2.5 inches long it can be 2.25 or 2 inches long so i don't want this to be too long so i will be maintaining 2 inches and 1 quarter so that is 2.5 inches so i will adjust the flap on the wrong side until i have my desired measurement okay so now i have the exact measurement i needed you can see what i have then i will open up my jacket like so to the wrong side then i will secure it together with my sewing pins okay so now i have it pinned together now i will take you to my sewing machine and i will stitch from this point that is where the flap starts from this point to the other side of the flap point okay and i will make sure i stitch very close to this seam or i will stitch exactly on this seam so when you are constructing yours make sure you are very close to this seam or you, you can stitch exactly on the seam line so guys now i have the flap joined together with the welt so this is what i have after joining you can see this is the inside of the jacket so this is the inside if you have an excess make sure you trim it off so that the seam allowance will align together with the allowance for the world so this is what i have after attaching the world so the next step is to construct the pocket bag in constructing the pocket bag i will be needing one of the facing i cut out and one of the lining okay so here is the facing before you attach your facing always have it at the back of your mind that the right side must be showing at the top like so so which means if i position my words like so I must see the right side of my fabric inside you can see what i'm having now so it has to be inside so and because of this the positioning of my of my facing goes like this then i will flip over my jacket then hold the pieces together so that is the facing together with the seam allowance i have then i will secure them together with my sewing pin all the measurements i use in cutting out the facing the pocket bag the pocket welt and every other pieces i used in constructing my blazer jacket they are all well explained in the last episode of this video series that is episode 5 so make sure you watch the video so that you will know the measurements you'll be using in cutting out your pieces. So after attaching the facing, so this is what I will have. You can see what I'm having here. So this is what I will have. So I'll hold it together like so. Then I will stitch on the same seam line or very close to the seam line. So guys, now I have the facing attached to the pocket as you can see this is what i have you can see the inside i can see the right side of my fabric inside the pocket then on the wrong side this is what i have now the next step is to attach the pocket world so in attaching the pocket world i will open up the facing like so so i'll open it up so I will position it right side, this is the right side of my pocket bag and this is the wrong side of my pocket bag. This is the wrong side of my pocket bag. So I will position it, you can see my pocket bag is facing upward towards the upper part of the jacket on the wrong side. Okay, right side facing the right side of the world. Then I will hold the wet like so together with the pocket bag so i will make sure the two edges align properly okay guys now i have my pocket 
back pin together with the pocket welt so the next step is to stitch this together you can see what i'm having i have my seam line here so guys this time around i'm not stitching on the seam line but i will stitch like quarter or one over eight of an inch away from the seam line so i will stitch from hedge to hedge and i'll be back to show you the next step so guys now i have the pocket bag attached to the lower part of the world as you can see this is what i have after attaching it now i will remove my sewing pin from this from the facing then i will hold the two together like so can you see what i'm having now i will be attaching the po the pocket bag together with the facing right side facing the right side okay so i will stitch from hedge to hedge after stitching this is what i will have then i will open it up like so then align the two properly can you see what i have then i will close the two sides you can see the two sides are opened then i will close the two sides i will stitch from here downward to the lower part of the pocket bag and i will repeat the same process on the other side as well and i will be back to show you the final result of our pocket now i will be closing the two sides of the pocket bag so guys now i have the two sides of the pocket bag closed then i will trim off the excess now the pocket is ready so this is what i have you can see how beautiful and neat it looks then i'll give it a final press so i'll press the inside so it will be staying flat and neat okay guys this is where i will be stopping in this video thank you so much for watching this video to this point meet me in the next episode where i shall continue in the construction of a short collar blazer jacket with double-sided vent till then always do remember there is no elevator to success you have to take the stairs